Hey, coin collectors and history buffs. Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of the 1966 Lincoln penny. Ever wondered why some pennies from this era don't have mint marks? Or why they stand out among other coins? Stick around because we're about to uncover the unique history, mintage details, and surprising value of the 1966 penny, including some that fetched thousands of dollars at auction. Let's get started. The Lincoln penny has been a staple of American coinage since 1909, honoring the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Before 1909, no actual historical figures had been featured on U.S. coins, following George Washington's belief that such depictions were too monarchical. However, things changed with the introduction of the Lincoln penny. In 1966, all pennies were struck without mint marks, a decision made by U.S. officials to discourage hoarding. Collectors were keen to scoop up coins, and the absence of a mint mark added a layer of mystery to these small copper treasures. In 1966, three mints, Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, produced pennies. But here's the catch. None of them had mint marks, making it difficult to trace their origins. This was done to prevent people from hoarding pennies based on which mint they came from. Philadelphia produced 811,100,000 pennies, Denver, 991,431,200, and San Francisco, 383,355,000 regular strike pennies. Additionally, the San Francisco Mint produced 2,261,583 special mint set, SMS pennies, which were meant for collectors. Despite these high numbers, the 1966 penny remains affordable due to its large mintage. Despite being widely produced, some 1966 pennies can fetch significant prices, especially in higher grades. The value of these pennies depends largely on their condition. A 1966 penny graded MS-60 might only be worth around 40 cents, but in MS-66, that price jumps to $25. If you find an MS-67 penny, you could be looking at $550. Some collectors have even snagged incredible prices at auction, with a red-toned MS-67 penny selling for a whopping $6,463 in 2012. So keep an eye out for those top condition pieces. Now let's talk about those special mint set, SMS pennies from San Francisco. These were produced exclusively for collectors, not for circulation, which means many are still in excellent condition today. SMS pennies graded SP65 to SP67 typically sell for between $3 and $14, while nearly perfect SP68 specimens can fetch up to $100. One of the highest paid SMS pennies, an SP69 red tone, sold for $863 in 2001. While not as high as regular strike auction records, SMS pennies can still be a great find for dedicated collectors. Deep cameo contrast coins, known for their striking visual contrast, often come with a hefty price tag. SMS pennies with deep cameo contrast are among the most desirable for collectors. For instance, an SP65 SMS penny with cameo contrast might fetch around $175, while an SP67 could sell for as much as $750. The highest auction record for an SP-graded penny with deep cameo contrast is an impressive $2,585 set in 2014. If you're lucky enough to come across one, you could be holding a valuable piece of history in your hands. And that's the story of the 1966 penny. From its unique minting history without a mint mark to its surprising value at auction, this humble coin holds a special place in the world of numismatics. So next time you're checking your loose change, keep an eye out for one of these rare gems. You never know, you might just find a treasure worth thousands. Hello, my friends. It's time to talk about coins. All coins are valuable, even those with errors. In this video, we'll show you two currencies an original currency, and a currency with an error. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do it. Show your support for our content and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos. Our goal is to increase brand awareness and reach audiences everywhere. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and join us on this exciting journey. The two coins I'm holding are from the coin collection and were circulated in 1967. The one on the left had light to medium wear on the device motifs. 
Another appears to be a mistake coin, struck by an eroding die or struck through grease, as evidenced by the first letters of some motto. It also has a large diagonal crack. That's for sure not a die crack. In the event of a die crack, the line must have raised surfaces rather than gouge. It's very likely that the post-meeting damage will exceed $2.2 billion. Because 1967 Roosevelt times were struck for circulation, locating an example should be rather simple. Finding examples in circulated grades up to MS-66 condition should be easy. They are also fairly stable under MS-67 circumstances. With that modest price, almost everybody can purchase one in MS-68 conditions. They are scars with few known examples. At mid-stage 68, a sample in any condition displaying entire band detail is extremely rare. They're worth more than $1,800 with full bands today. As you can see, our coins do not meet the entire band designation requirement. This 1967 Roosevelt time from Special Mint set magnificent copper nickel coin at mint stage 68 with deep cameo feature white on black appearance grits. The spectator of the superb deep cameo is poorly struck. Crisply struck features can be observed in Roosevelt's hair as vertical lines and torch bands until surfaces are nearly flawless. On January 9, 2014, it sold for $99,187.50 at 30 auctions. Hey, coin collectors, have you ever come across a 1957 Jefferson nickel and wondered if it's worth anything? Maybe you're new to the hobby or a seasoned collector trying to understand if this coin could be a hidden treasure. Well, stick around because today we're diving deep into the value of the 1957 nickel and what makes some of these coins worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Let's get started. The 1957 nickel is part of the famous Jefferson Nickel series, which began in 1938. Designed by Felix Schlag, a German immigrant, the Jefferson nickel replaced the Buffalo nickel, which had been in circulation since 1913. While the Buffalo nickel was loved for its bold design, it posed many problems for the mint, such as wearing down the dyes too quickly. After 25 years, the U.S. Mint had the opportunity to introduce a new nickel without needing congressional approval. They held a competition to find a new design, and Schlag's depiction of Thomas Jefferson won. This design has remained relatively unchanged, making the 1957 nickel look very similar to others in the series. Now let's take a closer look at the design. The obverse side of the coin features a left-facing portrait of Thomas Jefferson with his hair tied back in a low ponytail. Around the edge, you'll find the words, In God We Trust, on the left, and Liberty with the Year, 1,957 inches on the right. A small five-pointed star sits between the two. The reverse side displays Jefferson's historic home, Monticello. A unique feature to look for is the clarity of the stairs leading up to Monticello. Coins with clear steps are considered more valuable. Underneath the Monticello image, you'll find the denomination Five Cents and United States of America. The Latin motto E Pluribus Unum appears at the top. The 1957 nickel was struck at both the Philadelphia and Denver mints. The Philadelphia mint produced a whopping 38.4 million of these nickels, most of which entered circulation. These coins are known for their weak strikes meaning the design details aren't as sharp as they could be. The planches or metal blanks used for the coins often had imperfections, resulting in lower quality strikes. These 1957 nickels, particularly from Philadelphia, were also struck on darker planches, making them less visually appealing. As a result, many of these coins are quite common and generally worth between 10 cents and 20 cents in circulated condition. If you're lucky enough to find a 1957 nickel in mint state or uncirculated condition, you're in better shape. Uncirculated coins from 1957 can still be quite affordable. Coins graded MS-65, mint state 65, are worth around $22.50, while MS-67 graded examples can fetch up to $480. But the real jackpot comes if your 1957 nickel has what's called full steps meaning the steps leading up to Monticello are perfectly clear. These full-step nickels are incredibly rare and can sell for as much as $1,250 on the open market. While most 1957 nickels are affordable, some have fetched eye-popping prices. 
The most expensive 1957 nickel without a mint mark was sold at a heritage auction sale in 2006 for an astonishing $4,313. This was a mint state coin with those highly coveted full steps. So if you think you have a rare or uncirculated 1957 nickel, it might be worth getting it graded by a professional service like the Professional Coin Grading Service, PCGS. Who knows, you could be holding on to a small fortune. So is your 1957 nickel worth anything? Most likely it's not going to make you rich if it's been in circulation. However, if you come across one in pristine condition or with full steps, you could be looking at a significant return. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just getting started, the 1957 nickel is an interesting piece of American history with potential value. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more coin collecting tips and insights. Hello, everyone. It's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode. These are 1977 Philadelphia samples that were heavily braided 10 cents coins that were widely distributed. As a result, they are nowhere near meeting the criteria for full band identification. Please use the build and subscribe buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times. Since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It lacks any distinctive qualities or noticeable rarities that would considerably increase its value, or collectible value. Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977 Roosevelt dimes in circulation often sell for less than their 10 cents face value. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. 66 was full bands, PCGs reported three examples, and guiding prices, which suggests $525. The population of Miss 67 FB in the service consists of two specimens with no finer. At the Great Collections Auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These appealing toned specimens in at least 67% condition with all bands sell for $14,106.25 plus buyer's fee. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons on YouTube and keep following us there. People discover unusual coins on a daily basis, but they have no idea how much they are worth. In this video, I'll give you an example of a coin that may easily slip under the radar, with no one even being aware of its value or true rarity. Look at this wheat dime from 1958, which fetched $1,110 at auction. Currently, Annex is grading this coin. Now, in my experience, Annex will frequently be utilized when grading mistake coins, but not always. They are less expensive than NGC and PCGs. However, a different video has more information on grading. You must understand that this coin, which was graded between a mid-state 63 and a 70, is the highest rating. Thus, when it comes to the mid-state grade, it is on the lower end of the grading scale. Therefore, even if the coin you hold may resemble this one from 1958, it is not the same coin. Many times people will bring me their coins and declare that they believe they are in possession of a rare coin. The coin is actually saved incorrectly despite how it appears, range and has sustained significant environmental harm. Weighing the coin is a reliable technique to determine if you have one like this. Due to this, a Cuban one-cent blank was unintentionally used to strike this 1958 coin. Now, a blank only denotes a the metal blank on which the coin has been struck. You can tell since this coin weighs 2.44 grams, while it should weigh 3.11 grams, as evidenced by the moment. Therefore, that change is pretty important. Consider that the U.S. Mint accepts that with a 10% success rate. Weight. That means that your coin's weight can be 10% greater or lower and still be regarded acceptable. This coin cost $1,110 because it was produced on a blank cube of one cent. 
Keep it safe if you have one since its condition does matter. A sophisticated algorithm on YouTube determines exactly which video you should view next, and that video is displayed on the screen. So I'll see if you click on that video.